Well, I was hoping that it did not come to this. Whoop, there it is. Got him, better one. Oh, nice fish. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. As you can see, I'm standing in front of the fishing man cave, which is that little room right there, but uh, it's really, really bright and hot out there in the world. Let me just take a couple steps back real quick so I don't get melted by the sun. We are gonna go fishing in today's video, but first let me kind of give a little backstory on why we're doing what we're doing and what we're going to be doing. So a couple weeks ago, I was out fishing and I was kind of just driving past some of the local ponds that I, you know, I have a bunch of ponds that I fish and sometimes I just drive past them to see how they look, see how the fish look and all that good stuff, see how the ecosystem and the environment looks. Well, unfortunately, as you guys know, I mean, a lot of my ponds are down right now. There's this drought going on in the southeast. It's a massive drought, weeks and weeks and weeks with no rain. And I mean, I mean, let me just show you guys what my front yard looks like. Check out that brown grass right there, guys. That's what drought yard grass looks like. I mean, it's freaking dead. It's horrible. So unfortunately, that's affecting the ponds that I fish a lot too. However, one good byproduct of the water levels being really low in some of these ponds is it clears the water up because there's been no rain and the water levels are low. So you can actually like see fish just swimming around. So on this particular day, I actually was making a video a couple weeks ago, you guys may remember, I was out there at a couple of these ponds and I was seeing big bass just swimming around, cruising. We're talking about four, five, six pounds plus maybe bass, just cruising around waiting to be caught. Now in that video, I reached out to you guys. Now I wasn't worried about catching big bass at that particular moment in that video, I was doing something else. In my mind, I was like, man, I've got to come back to this pond with some lures designed to catch big fish. So I asked you guys to get in the comment section and tell me what you caught your PB on. And you guys did what you do, what the Lojo Fishing Fan does. You guys responded in overwhelming numbers, just giving me advice, different kinds of fishing styles, not just lures, but tips on how you were fishing those lures. That's why I call you all the best, the best subscribers on YouTube, because when I ask for something, you deliver. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take the the advice that you guys gave me and we're gonna build a little tackle box we're gonna throw as many lures as I can remember that was commented by you guys that helped you catch your PB or a big bass for you and we're gonna take as many of those lures as we can we're gonna go back out to a few of these ponds today and although it's hot now it's very 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 hot so keep that in mind it's gonna be a grind no matter what but we're gonna just slow it down and focus on big bites only. I hope you all remember the days of Lojo having a clean fishing man cave. Well, guess what? Uh, those days are long gone because what happens is over time, we just, we trash it over and over and over again. And we have a random Cosmos dry rub, Honey Chipotle Killer B just sitting in here. So yeah, right next to a knife, an empty bottle of water and a headlamp. So it looks like there were some interesting ideas going on right here. Right off the bat, I'm seeing one of the lures that I really want to use, and that is a big ribbon tail worm. This particular worm is obviously a Guggenbaits Mondo worm, and I'm thinking a natural color like a watermelon or a green pumpkin will work, but you guys really told me, you know, a big, big worm in the summertime, slow dragging it. So we'll toss that in there. Another thing you guys really mentioned was just top water in general. Now right here I have a buzz bait and I have a whopper plopper. I think we'll put a whopper flopper in the box for now and just kind of roll with it it's gonna be tough to catch a topwater fish in the middle of the day like this but you know it's good to have oh, 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 oh. i'll tell you another thing you guys really said was a big swim bait well check check out what daddy's got right here that's right guys we're gonna bring out the old megalodon right here this is like a a six ounce freaking handmade wood painted swim bait. So that's one of the swim baits we're gonna bring. Let me grab a couple other different kinds of swim baits. Take a look at the old swim bait box here. I really do love that old Gantarell Junior, the old bluegill ultra realistic swim bait. Ouch, sharp hooks, that needs to go in there. Ooh, what about the old, the old whatchamacallit? The old Huddleston right there, you guys remember that? I've only thrown it a couple times. Soft plastic swim bait, but a great boot tail, great action. That needs to go in there. I'll tell you one thing, if I had a dollar for every one of you that said a chatterbait, I mean, that may have been one of the one of the most said things. So as far as color, we're just gonna go with the natural color, but we'll throw that in there too. 
trying to think of what else. I mean, you know, we got jigs. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would say jigs. You know, spinner baits have been kind of known in Florida to be big bass catching machines, but I'm just thinking like middle of the day type deal. Uh, maybe, you know, a jig might work in the middle of the day. I could drag around a jig. I don't know, grab a little green pumpkin jig right there. I think we're pretty much good to go with that assortment of lures. I mean, obviously it's gonna be like 97 degrees. It already is like 90 right now. It's still in the morning time, so. You know, I don't know. I don't know how many of these lures I'm going to be able to actually use effectively, but we're definitely going to take them all and try at least a few of them and see what we can do. You know, that's all we can do. For those of you big bass lovers out there, make sure you hang around all the way through this video because we're going to catch some good fish. I just have a good feeling about today. If you end up enjoying today's video, guys, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. And for the love of Pete, subscribe to the channel if you even remotely like the content, guys. Subscribing is just clicking a button below the video. It's a red button that says subscribe. All it means is you join the Lojo Fishing fam, the best subscribers on YouTube. It's 100% free. It's easy to do, guys. Please do that. Help me out. Help the channel out. And as always, get in that comment section. Give me suggestions. You know, if you see anything throughout the video you want to give me a suggestion on or a future video, or you just want to say, hey, what's up, Lojo? I appreciate all the comments. But let's go ahead and head out to the water and get going. Well, the question is and always will be, what are we going to start with to kick off this trophy hunt first we got to get the sun protection gloves on guys you guys continue to ask me why i wear gloves sun protection sun protection sun protection skin cancer is a real thing and it does kill people and even the people that doesn't kill it's a very in inconveniencing thing to happen to you so got to protect the old paws as much as you can it's probably too late in the morning to, to throw top water really effectively, but I would like to try to throw the old whopper plopper a little bit just because I have caught some nice fish on whopper ploppers before, so why not give it a shot, right? Well, I mean, I'm seeing fish, I mean, everywhere. Seen a little three pounder, about the biggest one that I've seen so far. Just kind of swimming away. <laughs> Scared all the fish out of here with my whopper plopper. Let's take a look at the other pond over here. Like I, I just really feel like this it's too late to be throwing this aggressive of a top water, but I can tell you guys right now that big swim bay right there, as much as I want to throw it, it's so shallow in that pond. I just don't think it's gonna work. It's so heavy, it sinks so fast, it's just not gonna be very conducive. But what we can do is we can throw this old Huddleston right here, which is a pretty good size swim bait. But the thing what, what I like about this is it's a slow sinking. I mean, it sinks, it sinks about this slow. I mean, really slow. And you can retrieve it really slowly and that boot tail just continues to kick. This big swim bait gives us a better chance with this the low water levels and something that we need to swim really slow. If nothing else, we can maybe get a couple followers to come in and show themselves. Here's to hoping. Well, this swim bait has uh, done its job. It has produced a ton of followers. And we've seen a couple four, maybe even five pound bass come up and look at it. But the problem is most of the followers this thing is getting are about the size of the bait, maybe a little bit bigger. I just, maybe this bait is not representative of the fish that they're actually eating. A great swim bait, it looks great in the water, but it's just not getting the reaction that we need. So, but I have an idea. Let's hit them with a different swim bait. Let's hit them with the old Gantarell Jackal Ultimate, real, real lifelike bluegill swim bait. And it floats too, which is the key with how low this water level is. But let's, I think that they were, they were liking the swim bait presentation, but maybe not that particular swim bait. So maybe let's give them something different to look at here. Well, once again, I'm getting followed by about 50 bass. <laughs> They're just not quite the right size. It's okay though, I see a couple bigger ones over here. Bigger, not huge. It's surrounded by bass, right? I wish you guys could see this. This is truly a sight. It's surrounded by bass. I'm, I'm talking about like 20, and they're all surrounding it, but nobody will try to eat it. Pretty amazing, actually. There's a four pounder right there, maybe even a five. Actually, a couple big bass. And they're all looking at it. They just, you know, you know what it is? They seem like super lethargic, you know? They're like, they're hot, they're sweaty, 
<laughs> they don't they don't have that much oxygen it's almost like they don't want to eat you know oh my goodness this is so frustrating i wish i i need to pull my big camera out and try to zoom in and let you guys see what i'm looking at because it's pretty crazy let me give you guys an idea of what we're looking at here as you can see there's a bunch of small bass you know just kind of swimming around in the shadows that's nothing though let's find some big ones there's a slightly bigger one right there it's probably a two some chains like they're just they're just swimming around it's wild i mean look at that guys right there that's a four pound largemouth bass i mean right there just sitting there and over there you guys can't really see but there's more i mean there's three four pounders just like but look how lethargic that bass looks right there it's almost like he's sitting on the grass so i just i don't know i don't know what else to do well it looks like we're gonna have to resort to the old texas rig with a big worm i just don't know what else to do guys i mean honestly you know they're the bass are there they're sitting right there and they're big they, they look interested they're just not you know super excited i mean i don't know what else to do i mean trophy bass hunting is one of those things it's hard enough as it is but in the summertime it's like it's almost freaking impossible i mean honestly what else can we do except for you know throw a texas rig at them and try to hit them in the face with it and look that bass is not moving you guys can't see him on gopro but brought that worm right past his face i'm gonna try to hit him with it Try to make him really angry guys it's two inches in front of his face man this is wild you know that bass may not be doing too well <laughs> like i'm not even joking right now that bass may be about to die i don't know if i've seen one in that way before you know i've seen plenty of lethargic bass but that one's like not even moving like i'm casting right on top of him okay he finally moved okay good <laughs> <laughs> good he's alive so that that makes me feel better but that's how lethargic they are though i mean I, i've just about hit him in the face with that worm and not only was he not interested in it but he didn't even move for a while i got that same i got two four pounders looking at it guys like nosing up on the worm it's just kind of in the dirt i'm trying to move it every now and again so they know it's alive but man this is this is just how it's been all day big bass looking at it that's a big boy right there god dang it scared him off the bank i could i didn't see him guys guys swimming out there to the depths now dang well not the depths because his water his pond's not deep yeah Let's see if i can hit him Boop. put it out there in front of him whoa jeez what is going on anyways i was walking and i mean there's a five pounder right there and just swam off well, I was hoping that it did not come to this because this thing, <laughs> this is so big. It weighs like it's like 10 ounces or something, or like maybe eight, I don't know. Maybe it's six, I don't know. But look at look at the rod bend that it puts. This is a seven foot 10, extra heavy rod. And look at the bend that it puts in it, like just sitting there. In fact, this rod's probably not even heavy enough to throw it, but oh, oh, sounds like a brick hitting the water. But this thing is a very slow sinker as well. And it has just a great side to side action. I wish you guys could see it in the water. You know, these big baits, they're known to bring out those big, big, big bites. I love this thing. You hardly even have to work it. You just do what I'm doing. You know, just kind of reel it a little bit, just kind of pop it with the reel. And it just goes whoop, 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 there it is. Now we also really do not need to lose this thing because it was handmade and it cost over $300. So now I didn't pay for it, thank thank the Lord. It's a, it's a big boy. It's a nice little swim bait, so let's not lose it. Oh man, something's got it right now. Oh, nice fish. No way. God, right underneath that tree. Oh man, I gotta land him flippity flip flap. Where did you come from, buddy? On the big worm. It's not my PB, but that's a nice fish. Jeez, that was nuts. That was absolute nuts. This is a, this is the same situation I broke my rod in last time. Let's try to not do that. Let's make sure there's not a gator coming for us. Line, don't break. All right, that's a big fish right there, guys. Very nice. That's like a freaking tank. Thing is stout too. Woo, let me get out of this gator trap. All right, he's bleeding a little bit. Let me get this hook out of his throat. All right, got it out of his mouth, clean. Very nice, not my PB. It's about a four pound, three and a half pound bass. It might be somebody's PB. Let's get him back in the water. He was bleeding a little bit. 
right, he took off. That was a <laughs> very strange uh, chain of events right there, one might say. The so cast at this tree right here. <laughs> And I mean, I'm, I'm not paying attention. You know, I'm on my phone. I'm kind of working the bait with one arm like that, you know. And I look down at the base of the tree and there's a bunch of like mud kicked up, you know, like as if a fish had moved out of there really quickly. And so I was like, huh, that's weird. It's right where my worm was. So I start, you know, popping it a little bit more and my line is like running underneath the tree. So wowzers. Okay. So I am jacked up right now, guys. Holy smokes. That's just, I don't know. Like I said, it's just not what you're expecting. You know, it's so hot. Wow. Okay. So there are big bass in this pond too. And I didn't know my camera was on. So I had to fiddle with that for a second before I could set the hook. So that was, uh, that was your classic Lojo fishing comedy of errors type situation right there. Whew. But it all, it all turned out though, thankfully. Got him. Oh, got him. Oh, oh, he's not that big. He felt good for a second. He's a little smaller than the last one. It's a nice fish though. All these fish. Oh no, he's on a tree. Come on, buddy. No. Okay. It's a solid two pounder right there. If we were in a tournament, that'd be a nice fish to have. Well, maybe a pound and a half. He just keeps getting smaller. <laughs> wow. Okay. Healthy fish though. Fat fish. Sweet. Okay. That was on the uh, the worm again. Haven't deviated very far from the worm. You know, we've well, we've tried. We tried to throw in all kinds of stuff besides the worm, but we keep coming back to the big Texas rig worm because it's just it's a summertime sleigh fest lure. They always feel good when you set the hook on them, you know, especially when I, he was kind of like in the tree, I think. So he may have been in some wood or something. So for a second, when I first set the hook, you know, he kind of felt like he had a little caboose on him, if you guys know what I mean. The worm's working, which is the good, that's the good part. Bad part is we're not catching the size that we want, but that sun's just gonna keep on coming up. The temperature's gonna keep rising and our chances and our percentages are just gonna keep going down and down and down. I do know that much for sure. Well, we've uh, figured out that these bass in this pond are active. I wanna find the biggest bass that there is out there. Woo! Dang it, I think this swim bait is just too freaking big. Too big for any of these fish. <laughs> Even the really big fish, it's too big for them. Golly. Oh my God, I just had a bite. I pulled it right out of his mouth. Wow. Come on, Lojo. That wasn't smart. <laughs> I'm over here. Oh, there's some bass right there in front of me. Oh boy. Oh, those are some nice bass. I don't think they're huge, but they're couple of them were nice. Dang, I think they saw me. Freaking cruising right there. I was squatting down, stretching my back out a little bit like this, and I realized something was chewing on my worm. By the time I stood up, I would yanked it out of his mouth like a real big dumb idiot. Got him. Better one. Oh, oh man. Oh, a nice one. Oh boy, what a hog. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, buddy. Ooh, it might be bigger than the first one. This one might be a more solid four and some change. If I can get him in. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Very nice fish. Look at that. Just skin hooked in the side of the face. Whew. Well, the old big Mondo worm is doing some work today, boys. Let's get a weight on this thing real quick. It's got to be a solid four. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's a solid fish. If it's not four, I'll be shocked. All right, zeroed out. 314. Wow, I can't believe that thing's not four pounds. Well, it's, I mean, it's right there, 314. That's really close to four pounds. All right, buddy. I love you. Oh, yeah. There he goes. He is healthy, feeling good, swimming like a champ. Wowzers. Man, big worms. Who knew? <laughs> Obviously, I'm being sarcastic, guys. Everybody should know that a big ribbon tail worm is just, can be the juice. It's never a guarantee, you know, what's going to work and what's not. Man, big ribbon tail worm coming through. Well, apparently I caught 
every single fish that was in here because I just fast forwarded an hour and man uh, you talk about the bite shutting off you know we kind of thought we were we were on them for a second and man that shiz is over all right boys and girls so what did we learn today <laughs> really not a whole lot I mean we kind of knew what we were getting into today but we just didn't know how it was going to turn out it's the beauty of stuff like this you, you never know how this is going to turn out we set out earlier today with the goal of trying to catch my new pb or just a big bass in general which is kind of always the goal but today we really wanted to focus our lure selection on and how we fished on trying to catch that big big fish like the biggest bass in the pond and i want to thank you guys for giving me so many tips and uh, you know lure choices that you guys caught your pb on i mean i saw so many so thank you for getting involved in that because that actually helped me shape this video and the lures that i was going to use i tell you one thing i learned well i didn't learn one thing i was reminded of because i already knew and that is big worms in the summertime i mean big worms ribbon tail they catch fish and they catch quality fish as you guys saw they were just it was killing them killing them killing them killing them now the other lures they showed some sign of promise when I mean, we were throwing big swim baits for a while we got a ton of interest over there at those other ponds but the fish wouldn't commit and there could be a million reasons why they wouldn't commit but they wouldn't commit tried throwing the monster swim bait and that's just gonna have to be one of those things it's gonna have to be a perfect situation for that thing to work because i just don't have the knowledge to throw it correctly and the top water didn't work either but i think that was 100 percent because i got a late start you know top waters excel in low light conditions you know and i just by the time i got out here it was nine o'clock it was hot so you know that's just the life of having to drop off kids at school you're not going to be able to get out there at the crack of dawn all the time nevertheless though i had a great time caught some nice fish caught a couple right at four pounds which you know to some people that's not really a big fish to me i'm going to get excited about those every single time and i'm sure there's a bunch of you probably thousands of you watching that four pounds would be your pb so that's why i get so excited guys we can't all be the guy that goes to a pond and catches a seven eight nine pounder every week we can't all be that person and i'm not that person either so hopefully you guys can relate to me and being a just a regular guy who catches a four pounder and gets excited anyways though thank you so much for joining me in today's video remember guys if you like the content smash the thumbs up button for me and make sure you're subscribed okay those are two things that really help the channel if you want to help the channel even more financially help the channel and guys i don't like asking for money ever but this is not asking for money this is me telling you hey if you want to buy some merch some of the lojo fishing merch on lojofishing.com that money the little bit that i get that actually helps fund the channel keeps me doing these fishing adventures all the time so keep that in mind there's a link in the description buy lojo fishing merch if you ever want to go look at that stuff but guys i am getting out of here on to the next fishing adventure thank you so much for watching i love you very much fist bump i am out